Morning all. Okay, let's go back to round two of the Chess Olympiad. England versus Brazil, strong Brazilian team. And on board three, Nigel Short was playing Alexandra Fear, a Grandmaster 2582. Nigel Short is a higher rated GM at 2698, approaching that magical 2700 mark nearly. Okay, so E4 from Nigel, and Alexandra plays the Sicilian defence. And the first little surprise, we see knight c3. So the more common move is knight f3. This is sometimes the closed Sicilian, sometimes the Grand Prix attack. Depends really on what, what black does. What will be the most effective approach? Black plays d6. So committing the d-pawn with one small step might mean that uh, black's less likely to play for e6 and d5. So in this setup, f4 actually looks a little bit more attractive if that's going to have to waste time moving this d-pawn again. Uh, potentially the bishop could be on c4 or it could be on uh, bishop b5 which is um, the bishop b5 Sicilian uh, debate has been uh, re-sparked by Garwin Jones who was actually on board too. He's written a book I believe about the bishop b5 Sicilian. Okay, so after g6 we see now knight f3 and uh, bishop g7, and now not bishop c4, but actually bishop b5 check. So this is a little bit tricky for black. What does black actually do here? How does he defend against this check? Does he want to invite the possibility of double pawns? Uh, maybe that's really on the cards if knight c6. Actually, he plays bishop d7, which looks quite sensible. And white now plays a4. So not only adding support for the bishop, but also that, that could be useful later if black plays a6 and b5 is automatically um, made difficult, because that control over b5 later. Black does play, in fact, a6, and we see bishop takes d7 check. So which way should black capture? Well, he takes with the queen, and the slight weakness of the last move is that the queen's not eyeing b6 here, and white pounces in now with knight d5, threatening knight b6. The queen has to defend against that, or something has to defend against that. Um, so queen c6. And now we see d3, and white has a nice, interesting position, not typical of the open Sicilians. But still, black has some problems here. What is black's plan? He plays actually knight d7, and now we see queen e2. Okay, and after e6, we see a5. So white's marking out that b6 square, and if black wants to play b5 now, he's going to isolate the a-pawn. Okay, black actually castles queenside, which looks a little bit risky. Can white peel open that queenside? Okay, knight e3, and now black plays in the centre with d5. Okay, in this position now, Nigel just simply castles. He lets his e-pawn apparently go, but uh, black can't take that. Let's have a quick look. D takes, D takes. If queen takes e4, I believe there's knight g5 without ending check checking this. But to save embarrassment, it looks as though knight g5 is forking e4 and f7. In fact, it is the move, apparently, knight g5. Then taking on f7 is very, very pleasant for white. So that pawn is immune here. Black actually plays knight h6. He just wants to grab that f5 square. And after e5, it seems okay. Okay, it's locking out the bishop, but it is giving black that f5 square. But at the moment, e3 is guarding it. We see now an interesting move, c4, uh, potentially, from white, locking down uh, c5. Um, in fact, after knight f5, Pardon me, we see c4, and that only that not only um, locks down c5, it means, okay, b4 later, and trying to peel open the b-file will be very attractive for white. Black does play now d4, and his pawns are kind of locked down against white, and white plays knight c2. It looks as though b4 is definitely on the cards. What can black do in the meantime against white? Simply peeling open the b-file against the black king here. Black counterattacks in the centre, which looks like the classical thing to do. He plays f6. 
So we see the flank attack, b4. Okay, the problem with black's undermining e5 is that e6 is under it, which is potentially a little bit loose. So after f takes, f takes, black goes for that e5 pawn with queen c7. And probably, you know, it looks as though uh, black might have been factoring in b takes c as well in this. Uh, but actually, white plays a very interesting move here, possibly a lot stronger than b takes c. White plays b5, so letting go of the e pawn, he just wants to really rip open that b file like this. So knight takes e5, and we see the b file ripped open now. b takes, b takes. So what can white do with this b file? If a rook comes here, it will be attacking a6. Okay, b5 is covered by the pawn, but it looks generally quite vulnerable. There's also th these possibilities. The king's a little bit airy over here. Rook b1, and we see knight c6. And now e6 is also looking tempting, maybe to take here. Why didn't Nigel take on e6? Well, he plays a different move here. He plays rook b6. So queen e6, he's asking black to defend against that, because now c6 will drop. Okay, and black plays an awful looking move to have to play, king d7. Let's have a look here. Was in fact rook b6 stronger than queen e6? Maybe white's position already is looking very, very dangerous here. It seems queen e6 was also pretty strong from an engine point of view. Rook b6 also strong. So we see um, now after the surprising looking king d7. Yeah, white's advantage is becoming very clear here from an engine point of view. Let's close that off. We see knight g5 putting more pressure on e6. It's defended. Now white takes that pawn. It's a very, very nice outcome of the opening, of course, this position. Rook b8. And now knight e4. Beautiful knight on e4, hitting c5 now. Very, very pleasant. Black takes on a5. And now we see the other knight joining in with knight a3. So this menace of knight b5 is introduced. Knight b3, knight b5 hitting the queen. Black plays knight takes c1, hitting white's queen with check, potentially, so that's recaptured. But look at white's knights here, glorious on the light squares. Queen e5, and our rook on the 7th, very, very dangerous. And our beautiful move here. Can you guess what Nigel Short played in this position? If I give you 10 seconds, or you might want to pause the video. So 10 seconds starting from now. Okay, I hope you found it. Knight g5, offering the queen. So why can't the queen be taken? If queen takes, I think we'd see a check. And then we'd see a mate. <laughs> so it's quite clear cut. The rook on the seventh, in conjunction with these knights, is pretty dangerous indeed. These two knights and this rook are working beautifully in this position to support knight g5. So knight h6 was played here, covering that f7 check square. White exchanges off queens and plays rook e1. The pressure is relentless here. Bishop f4, now knight takes e6, check. Now getting out of the pin by supporting the rook, so knight takes f4 is really threatened now. We see check. Okay, black's really tied down here, faced with horrible threats all the time. Immediately, knight d6 check is being threatened here, for king, king rook, and also is actually mate because of this knight's position. So that's actually a threat of mate, which is covered with rook b6. And white wins more material. Knight takes c5, chipping away at black with that beautiful rook on the 7th. White's in full control here, it seems. And doesn't mind the exchange of rooks here. Knight takes e4. The knights are still beautiful, better than these guys. King d8, superior quality pieces. The rook munching a bit more. Rook takes h7. Okay. Knight g4. Knight's kicked. And it goes to h2 of all places. <laughs> so it looks as though black black's uh, hope is 
is is not that great here. He has to play a move like knight ta knight h two check, decentralizes the knight horribly. But from an engine point of view, I mean, it looks clear cut enough from the material. It looks as though Black could potentially resign here, but um, knight h two is not really mentioned. Um, White's advance is going up and up after knight h two check. Okay, so king e2, g5. Yes, it looks fairly desperate. g4. And okay, if these these guys can coordinate with the rook, then it might be dangerous. So rook a6, but this is extinguished now. This rook a2 counterplay is extinguished with rook a2. Rook a7, rather. Rook a7. So we see rook h6. Okay, now is h3 going to drop, though? Well, knight bd6, and now h3, taking on h3 will come at a big price that the knights and rooks uh, could create, a, the knight and rook rather, the knights and rook could create a mating net after rook takes h3. I believe with knight c5, that looks very, very dangerous. Or just knight f6, even better. Let's have a quick look at this. In this position, black played rook e6, but if he took on, on h3, well, knight c5, there might be um, also, you know, rook rook h6 might be possible to cover e6. But simply knight f6 here would introduce, for example, rook d7 mating with the two knights. Let's have a quick look. What does an engine think of this position? I believe knight f6 is stronger than knight c5. It's a forced mating too with either knight c5 or knight f6 was, is actually a mating three. So knight c5... Is there another mating net here? If rook h6 here, ah, rook d7. <laughs> Just rook d7, mate. So, yeah, that would be absolutely crushing. A mate in two or three if rook takes h3. So, this rook on seven is just mighty, mighty rook here with the knights. Beautiful, really. Rook e6 and now c5. So, bishop f4, okay. And it looks again, is black up to something naughty here? Well, king f2. And even though black now exchanges off that one of the the knights, still white's advantage looks overwhelming. And furthermore, this knight looks absolutely stranded and about to be munched with the carnivorous king here. Where is this knight going in this position? It, it offers itself up. And rook takes d6, an amusing attempt at a stalemate if knight takes d6. That's avoided with rook a8 check. Quite cheeky from black. <laughs> so okay okay let's have a look at this game again so well done Nigel and that secured a match victory in round two against the Brazilian team that was the only win of the round on the four boards Adams had drawn with uh, Rafael Leto a 26-23 Garwin Jones had drawn with um, Vescovi uh, Giovanni a 2-6-1-7 and David on Howell on board four had drawn with uh, Mkhitaryan uh, Kirchhoff Savag at 25-11. So this was a crucial game for a match point victory. So let's have a look at it again, this crucial game. So the open Sicilian was avoided, actually knight c3, one of my pet moves at the moment. And we see, in fact, Grand Prix attack system. And after knight f3, bishop g7, we see bishop b5 check not bishop c4 but bishop b5 check and bishop simply being supported okay and after a6 we see bishop takes d7 and the knight pouncing in threatening the fork on b6 and now we see d3 okay and now queen e2 it looks nice for white already out of the opening okay and the knight's left there of course because that would be a a, a discovered uh, attack on a, a check on winning the queen, so that has to be left there. And it's an uncomfortable uh, decision for black as well. He doesn't want to forfeit the right's castle, perhaps with knight e7, although that might be a decent move if it's only temporary, or knight f6. This move does look risky. If we look from an engine point of view, is it actually casting queenside the best move? It looks quite risky in principle. Engines seem to like other moves here. Well, this engine likes various other moves okay no but casting queen sides up there <laughs> so knight gf6 queen c8 so what was wrong with knight e7 is there actually something really really wrong in this position maybe e5 and it gives white an advantage okay 
So casting Queenside was up there though as an engine choice, believe it or not. And um, so 93, we saw d5 and a clever little move, castling, relying on the fact that the queen um, is vulnerable to knight g5s here if it took on e4. So actually, black played knight h6. And now this really is on the cards to take on e4. And it's awkward for white to defend, of course, uh, e4 in any other way apart from playing e5. So he's having to concede that f5 square. If he's forced to play e5, he's having to concede f5 by playing e5. And of course, e5 is also a target for f6. So he's really going to get his attack, uh, um, get it get started on the queen side to counter black, you know, smashing the white center here, starting with knight f5, uh, and then f6 carrying on later. So c4 is at least fixing these pawns on the queen side, ready for that b file peeling open. So d4, knight c2, and now black starts hammering away at white center. But this b file is very dangerous here, it seems. So after takes, takes, queen c7. I think this must have been one of the strongest moves, b5, not b takes c. Let's have a quick look because b5 with b8 is is causing structural damage to black, leaving an isolated a pawn. Let's have a look. b5 or bc. Actually, from an engine point of view, bc5 is is looking like the preferred move after b5. It's still looking an advantage for white, so maybe I don't know. From a human point of view, it's a matter of style, really. Okay, but it looks as though b5 has some really good stuff going on, going for it, like isolating the black a pawn, providing the hook on b6 to attack the a pawn because white's got the pawn on a5. So he lets c5 go. Okay, so he gets that b file anyway, with the hook on b6 ready made, and it looks like a really dangerous position already for black. It looks as though there's roots to his king here. Queen e6 was also potentially strong, but this this looks really good now. This position, it's it's uh, after rook takes a6, we see knight e4, and now this c5 is really under fire. Okay, and the other knight joins in after knight a3, and the position now is really actually a beautiful attacking position here, with the rook on the seventh. And this very, very nice move, knight g5 is played. And black's position is really just going downhill here. Uh, the rook and two knights are coordinating so well. So that getting some material. We have this episode now where, curiously, the knight decides to strand itself with knight h2 check, hoping maybe for some extra support from the black rook, but that's extinguished. And now there isn't time for rook takes h3 because the, these two knights and the rook will, will force a, a mate. After knight c5, the actual threat is rook d7, not knight e6. Even quicker mate if rook takes h3. There's knight c5 with the mate of rook d7. So rook e6, and now after c5. Also, if black doesn't do anything here, if he doesn't do this, then c6, c7 is pretty pretty useful, <laughs> just winning like that. Okay, now after, of course, the weakness of the last move here is that the king can now go and munch that knight on h2, that stranded knight. So this is fairly hopeless for black, and he cheekily plays for this stalemate in the final move <laughs> with rook takes d6. So knight takes d6 will be a stalemate draw, but no check. And now white is free to take the rook after. So black resigned here. So that was uh, sealing white for winning that match against Brazil. Congratulations to Nigel Short there. Comments or questions on YouTube? Thanks very much.